What's going on, y'all? Random thoughts here. And today we're going to talk about on-call rotation and how to make that process easier to manage and to be a part of. Well, let's just dive right into it. Being on call and supporting a large system isn't necessarily a fun thing to do, but I picked up a few things along the way that I wanted to share uh, that can probably make your life a lot easier. One of the more obvious items would be uh, team size. So if you have a larger team size in your engineering organization, it's much, much easier to swap shifts for on-call. Um, it's also a lot easier to create an actual on-call process and a rotational process as well, uh, because you don't want to find yourself taking on more weekends than you need to, uh, or more days than you really need to as well. Another thing that's helped me along the way is maintaining a reliable set of runbooks. Uh, and for anyone not familiar, a runbook can also be called a playbook. Some companies might call something else, but the point of the matter is, uh, so if there's an outage, if something might go wrong, uh, it's a set of instructions as to how to fix that particular issue. It might be SSH into the TC2 instance, uh, run this particular command, exit out of the SSH instance, it should be fixed, that kind of thing. So thing about runbooks, maintaining them is really, really helpful. I think particularly for me uh, as of late, uh, maintaining Kubernetes runbooks has been super helpful. Um, so in my case, EKS. Uh, and then from there, you can even kind of look at it as almost like a test case, like a regression suite. Uh, and then you can kind of pick and pull some of the critical items or some of the more annoying items uh, to automate. So that can be part of the sprint work as well. For those of you that maintain service level objectives and error budgets, uh, another piece could be maintaining those those error budgets and SLOs. So if you find a service is, is consistently going outside of those, those bounds, uh, it's a good opportunity, probably one of the best opportunities to have a conversation with that particular service team. So if you constantly find yourself on call and like you're getting paged all the time for a particular service and there's no effort to really address the, the deeper problems, uh, that's gonna have to be a larger conversation um, that, that SRE will likely spearhead. Another interesting area of improvement could be uh, measuring how long it actually takes to discover an issue um, or more than likely issues leading up to an event. Uh, it's an interesting thing to measure because if you're, those of which were on call like off hours and during evenings and whatnot, when you wake up and you have that sense of adrenaline and you're trying to find that particular issue, uh, it could be meaning of improvement on the observability suite. So that could mean better distributed tracing, real user monitoring, uh, infrastructure. So it might be a combination of different things there. Uh, something that I've been measuring lately is observability readiness. Uh, and really like identifying what we're missing from just the overall stack uh, and, and quantifying that and highlighting that each month during a, during a sync. So something to potentially improve your sleep could be to uh, utilize a follow the sun rotation. So initially what that means is uh, you have remote teams across the world that work with or for your organization. Uh, and during the day there might be development work and then during the evening it's kind of passed off uh, to continue that, that work. Um, and usually organizations use this to get product out quicker, uh, those kinds of reasonings. But for SRE and something that I've done at my core, current organization is that we do have remote teams across the world. So I set up a schedule where you have a team on call from like 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. in rotation. Uh, and then at like the 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. range, you can have a team uh, that might be just waking up uh, to take that uh, side of things as well on, on that time schedule. So that is uh, something to potentially improve your sleep. But once again, it's something that's easier said than done. You need a much uh, a higher organizational buy-in for something like that. So if you find yourself on call and you still want to maintain a social life of some kind, uh, one of the best things that I've, I've been doing lately has been uh, taking a cheaper laptop with me. So it's a Chromebook, ridiculous stickers are optional, um, but what I end up doing with this Chromebook is installing Linux on it, and there's various ways to do this. So Crouton, uh, more recently with newer uh, Chrome OS uh, uh, updates, you can actually just install it via developer tools. So it's just kind of a, a toggle to turn on, which is quite nice. Um, so something to keep in mind there. So as opposed to bringing like a MacBook M1, or an, like a maxed out XPS 13, like a daily driver like that, that's usually really expensive. Uh, I just bring a hundred dollar laptop. And if, it, if I lose it, if it gets stolen, so be it. Uh, but it's something to at least keep with me because I'm unable to really troubleshoot uh, on my phone. I can accept 
you know, those on-call pages, but I can't necessarily, you know, troubleshoot via my phone and remote into instances and do all these kinds of things. If for whatever reason you sleep through the call, uh, it's best to make sure that you have some kind of uh, hierarchical schedule in place. Uh, that's just one of the best things that I've, I've done, you know, across our teams. Uh, so if someone might miss the call or the page, then it goes to someone else. Uh, if they miss it for whatever reason, then it goes to someone else. And if they miss it, then it cycles, given you know the team size, of course. But that, that's been super beneficial and super helpful because thing, you know, things happen. And finally, something that's worked for me is to keep your phone, uh, your phone's ringer on and also on vibrate. So a while ago, I think I, I turned everything off during the evening uh, and I somehow woke up during an incident. And this was in the early morning. Um, but the point is like things, things happen. Uh, so I've just gotten accustomed to leaving the phone on because a long time ago I would, on a different number, I would always get spam calls for whatever reason, I guess the carrier or the number that they resold me, uh, had a lot of spam on it. So, but yeah, that's just something I've, uh, I've been doing is just always leaving the ringer on and vibrate on. Um, so just so, you know, if I'm off call, if I'm on rotation, whatever it might be, I don't turn it on and forget to, you know, or turn it off and forget to turn it back on and all that kind of thing. Uh, but that's it. Hopefully, uh, some of these, some of these, uh, suggestions help you. Uh, and if you have any more, leave some, uh, uh in the comments as well so that everyone can uh, benefit from it. All right. Take care, everyone. What's going on y'all? Random thoughts here. And today we're going to be covering blue.